This is it. Everybody that's anybody came through here. This is the original track sheet. Too late to practice now. I've worked harder than anybody I've ever known. It's like a crisis every second. So we got to hit him with everything we got. There's beer at the store. He's a bum with a record deal. <laughs> hey, mama. She's been a fan of mine since she was four. Oh, wait, that's a keeper. Please, give him a deal! You think that I'm gonna fling my ass out on the line for your drunk ass? Hell no! I'm Ruth Golden, this is Evan Eames and Zach Levy, and we went to Nashville, Tennessee to explore the world of country music songwriting. This was really the longest time that I ever spent there, and I think it allowed me the chance to see how the town operated. I appreciate any gig I can get in Nashville. I was really struck by the scope of the whole music scene. At times it seemed like everyone we met was either a singer or a songwriter, or was at least trying to be one. one especially at the Bluebird Cafe. It's one of the best known nightclubs in Nashville. We based ourselves there for six weeks with these small cameras and followed a number of songwriters around as they chased their dreams. But like in all showbiz stories, it always begins with an audition. The Bluebird Cafe is a legendary music club in Nashville. Country superstars like Garth Brooks and Kathy Matea got discovered by record labels there. When we first arrived, they were holding auditions for special songwriter showcase nights. How come you got here so early? Well, I, I just didn't know how long the line would be or anything like that, and I was really excited about auditioning, so I showed up early. This is my sixth time here, so I'm hoping six times to charm. Okay. How often are these? times a year, the next one's in September, and that's why we can't afford to audition them any more frequently because it's just too many people. Amy Curlin started the Bluebird Cafe about 15 years ago, and over the years she's developed a system which allows young songwriters to get their start here in Nashville. These boys lost their application right here, and I have to go get them out. But we drove almost 16 hours to get here. <laughs> really? Where did yes. you come from? I, came, I just drove down from uh, Rochester, New York. How important was it for you to get a thing at the Bluebird? Kind of like going to New York with on a wing and a prayer and getting an audition off Broadway, on Broadway. The hope of these songwriters is that if they get a chance to play here, someone important will be in the audience and discover them. Describe our music. Our music is, uh, I have a big Elvis influence in my life. And that's the name of our song. <laughs> we were drinking wild turkey, so I said, all right, start playing a beat. He played a beat and we wrote a song in one shot. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited. This, this, this is a chance that uh, we've all have been waiting for. It may just be a minute, but it's a, it's a golden minute. You know? <laughs> oh, is that all you get, a minute? Yeah, you only have one minute to sing one verse and one chorus. One verse, one chorus. So we got to hit them with everything we got. How many are there? There's only 76 because the rest of them all forgot that it was daylight savings time. Oh, well. Snooze, you lose. But it gets one minute to perform. Do people try and go over? People, it's not that they try and go over, it's that they're stupid. And they <laughs> play, do long introductions, or they think it's going to make the presentation better if they do the most dramatic part of the song, or that they know that their song has gone over so much better than everybody else's, that they just keep on playing while the rest of us up there keeping score are hashing their name mm -hmm. up. Don't crush each Broadway other coming in. Ready? Are we ready? As ready as we'll ever be, I guess. <laughs> this could be John and Chad's first step on the road to fame and fortune. But as we found out here in the country music capital of the world, the competition is fierce, and there's no telling which way things will go. 
I'm lost in this life. I struggle with its meaning every day. Most people that come to Nashville don't see the struggles that the musicians face. They just see the touristy side of the music industry. But really, they're songwriters in every crevice of the city. This is my job, by the way. There it is. That's why I get paid. <laughs> See, if they got the orange guest pass, they're okay. She gave me reason to leave when she let me down. This George boy's out of bam, bam. This George boy's out of bam, bam, bam. What freaks me out is when they come over here and they open their trunks up and they call me sir and I have to go out and search their car. Why would you have to search cars here? If they're like stealing like uh, cookies or something from. So my mom's in the kitchen cooking up collard greens. Dad is on the back porch doing the daddy thing. Rover's in the front yard gnawing on a dirty bone. So me and baby's in the back seat. I can't leave that woman alone. No. You just recently had to take this job, right? Yeah, yeah. I I left uh, I left it playing Atlanta five nights a week, doing four hours a night singing. You can't do that in Nashville because there's so many musicians up here, it's so flooded. I said, I just got to have me some chocolate pudding, sweet potato pie. She's better than both of them, she's the apple of my eye. I could never quit doing this because they're, why, why, why would you want to quit doing it? I mean, you know, because you can't get a deal or you can't make the money that you want to make at it. I think that's unreal realistic expectation. Okay, everybody, stop the strumming. It's too late to practice now. Thank you very much. I never get to get up on stage and get applauded for because I can't play the guitar at all. So, all right. So I think we all know why we're here today. You're here to audition for Sunday Songwriters Nights at the Bluebird, which is really sort of the beginning place to start playing at the Bluebird Cafe. This is part of the whole Nashville process. This isn't it. Uh, and so if you don't make it today, please keep trying. Play those open mics here and everywhere else, and uh, your moment will come around. Give me a chance to get to the back of the room and we'll get started. Thanks. I'm Jennifer Randall, number one. I'm from Austin, Texas, and the song is I'm Not Looking Back. You come walking down the street, it's just a matter of time. Try to warn me from the start that they knew you were gonna break my heart. This is his fifth time to audition. I really hope he makes it this time. Repeat both in there and Marty Cornish, and this song's called True Believe. Was the sixth day of the sixth month of the sixth year of our Lord? And he was reading from Revelations when his past walked through the door. She's lonely, in fact she's a little bit shy And he's kind of a little bit something about her to gain back in the life I've lost her The good ones will grab you back. Again, it's the mediocre ones, the sort of people in the middle ground that you have to pay attention to just to see if, if there is anything there. The good ones you don't miss and bad ones you don't miss because they stick out so much. I hate to see you squirm the way you do so come on and ask me to dance with Joe's Black Jack's cat swing. What's the criteria for good songs? Well, I mean, there are basic criteria. It shouldn't be, I love you, I really love you. Because I'm a doctor of L-O-V-E. And I love you and I'm going to love you some more. Yes, right. I'm a doctor of L-O-V-E. I mean, that's the thing about country music. You say the same thing everybody's been saying all along, mm -hmm. but say it in a new way that makes me sit up and pay attention. Okay, Chad Gilmer. My name is John Smith. 
I swear to God. All right, how about it, This is Chad Gilmer. Uh, we went down to Mobile, Alabama. <clears throat> and this little tune we're going to do here is called Wild Turkey. A few years ago, when you said we were through, getting the bottle was the only thing to do. JD and Nevin made me sick every night. Once I found wild turkey, everything was alright. They call me wild turkey, wild turkey's my name. Going into bars and drinking is my game. But they said pool number one at darts. But you got to beat when it comes to breaking hearts. And you got to beat when it comes to breaking hearts. Thank you. <laughs> How do you feel? How do I feel? Well, my knee stopped shaking about three seconds ago, so. <laughs> What's the process from here? I will pass about 25% of the people and send letters in the envelopes they brought with them back out to everybody, either sorry you didn't make it or yes you made it, here is your date. Thanks very much y'all, come back tonight. We open at six o'clock and uh, we'll see you soon. After the auditions end, the waiting begins for these hopefuls. And as we make our way around Nashville, we run into other Bluebird alumni. One of whom seems to be on the verge of success. Gene Cook is 34 years old and he's been trying to make it in the music business for his entire adult life. This is my band, Body Electric. This was a, a band I tried to get signed in New York for about two and a half years. That hairdo went over like a fart in a diving helmet down south. <laughs> you all thought I was a freak. Gene had a record deal in New York, but was dropped by the label before he had a chance to record anything. At about that same time, his wife left him, and he went home to Georgia pretty depressed and ready to give up on the music industry. But then someone convinced him to enter a talent contest. Thing was, was I was always singing all types of music, you know, and people thought that I had been changing. But while I was with my band, Body Electric, I was stockpiling R&B songs, man. I was writing them on the side. Let's find out which one of our three contestants is going to be $25,000 richer. I never get nervous when I sing or play anywhere, but when you have to stand up there and they're calling numbers out and they're like it's like a beauty contest, I don't like it. They kind of put you on the spot and you'll see these shots of me. They'll pan. I look like a deer in the headlights here. Here you go. Our second contestant was Gene Cook. Our judges gave Gene a score of 95 points. Our third contestant was Michael Mulder. Our judges get Michael's score. Check us out. Three points, and the winner with 95 points from Athens, Georgia, Gene Cook. Let's, let's see what the judges thought about your performance. Pam Lewis, how about this young man? Well, he looks like Opie, but he don't sing like Opie. Pam Lewis is a big-time manager in Nashville. She represented Garth Brooks as he rose to fame, and after the contest, she took Gene on as a client. So I went over to him, and I didn't have any business cards with me, and I had this, like, ripped piece of paper, and I'm like, <laughs> like you know, here, here, my name is Pam Lewis, and I, I'm a manager, and I'd really like to talk to you. And he was like, okay. Pam invited us to one of Nashville's famous recording studios to meet another one of her clients. And here is Tiffany. She's earlier than we thought. Tiffany was a very big pop star back in the early 80s when she was a teenager. In the United States, I haven't released a new album in 
Mm, about eight years. And that's just because I wasn't happy with the music that I was doing. And there's a lot of people that don't know that I started off in country. And, and I knew that there was a lot of people who were going to think, you know, she's just coming in to take advantage of the country scene because it's really big right now. Um, and that wasn't the case. I had been wanting to do this for quite some time. Tiffany and Malcolm are on opposite sides of the track. Okay, when you Tiffany is trying to get back into business. Malcolm's on the verge of making it. And we've got high hopes for both of them. Stay alive, Tom Snow from Sam. Pages rocking justice in the cradle. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Bluebird Cafe. And we're going to take a little visit, swap some tunes. Glad y'all are here. Malcolm sort of appeared out of the blue, and his was a name that kept coming up. This Malcolm guy is fantastic. We need to do something about Malcolm Holcomb. So he was more of a staff discovery. Neil Fagan is the sound man at the Bluebird Cafe. He's also a big fan of Malcolm's and was responsible for bringing him to the club. I wrote about him for a magazine. You don't know whether it's the hounds of hell or the hounds of heaven that are chasing him, but you know he's running, you know, and <laughs> he's running hard. And he's taking you with him when he when he gets up there on stage. You know? doesn't have a record deal right now. She spent her time in Nashville so far just working on her style. Right now she's finishing up a couple of songs for a demo album. That's what I wish you could be. Okay, when you hit the loves, can you back off just a little? We're getting too much of you there. Someone in love with me. That one had great tenderness. Let's okay. listen to that one. When I do come out, I want to be strong and have a band together or just a strong set and have some songs that I've either written or co-written or material that I know that I know this is what I'm about. And now that I have the material, I'm starting to get a little antsy. Now I feel like I have a complete package and now we're talking about doing some dates. What's, you know, what's open? And we just kind of wait and see what falls into our lap. Malcolm's actually one of the lucky ones. He's got a big deal with a major label, Geffen Records, and his CD is gonna be coming out soon. But when I started spending some time with him, I soon learned that He's a complicated person with a lot of internal struggles, and one of his battles is with alcohol. If you won't buy me a beer, I'll find someone who will. If you don't leave me, I'll find someone. Uh-oh, shit. Don't tell me. 
Son of a bitch. The keys. I think I got enough. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if I were a beer, what would I be? There's beer at the store. Hey, Evan, will you let me five hours till tomorrow? I need some cigarettes. We got we got plenty of cigarettes. We can think of something else to do other than get drunk, Malcolm. I would like a beer. Does that bother you? No, it doesn't bother me. You want to bring a six pack and Jordan comes over, I'll make a pot of coffee. I can't buy you beer. Okay. Can you loan me five dollars? The cigarettes? Can you loan me five dollars? I want to have a couple of beers, okay? Maybe, does he have any money? You know what? Right. I want to ask you to get the camera off now. show up and look somebody in the eye and say, hey man, give me a beer. <laughs> <laughs>